guys, Zach here with The Spook Report. Today we're gonna to be talking about a subject that absolutely fascinates me, and that's missing 411. All across our country, people are disappearing in our national parks, our state parks, as well as white wild refuges all across the country. Now this has expanded over the years into Canada, South America, and places all over the world. But in this video, we're gonna kind of hone in on North America, and America in particular. So, Missing 411 was started by one homicide detective who is now retired, David Politis, who began investigating and researching disappearances and missing person cases in our national parks and our state parks. He came to the conclusion that not only were these not logical disappearances, they did not meet any conventional standard in which a missing person case would play out. He began to notice very strange similarities in between these missing person cases that almost seemed to connect them. When he began to dig deeper and he reached out to the national parks, state parks, he began to notice an unusual trend amongst the park rangers and investigators. They seemed to not want to keep any of this information compiled, let alone give it to the public. They seemed extremely resistant to getting this information out there. So he made it his mission and goal to learn as much about this as he could and share that information with us. And like I said, to date, he has nine books written and hundreds of videos out there, including two movies that are all phenomenal and I highly recommend checking out. Now, in this video, we're gonna go over three of some of the most unusual missing 411 cases that I have uncovered myself. And I'm gonna share that with you here in a few. But real quick, I just wanna let you know, thank you so much for all the support we have been getting on our videos. We are a brand new content creator and I'm super excited to see where we can go with this. Our TikTok gained 5,000 followers in one day. Our YouTube's a little bit slower, but we're gonna catch up, that's for sure. However, this is going to be a long series in which I will release several videos on this subject this week alone, and we're gonna go into so many more other situations. So stay tuned. Here's our first case in the missing 411. Back in 1977, a man by the name Stephen Kubecki, age 23, was skiing out near Lake Michigan. He became tired and decided he wanted to rest near the lake. So he was skied down to the lake edge, sat down and began to recoup his energy after a day of skiing. Seems normal. Now, after a little while, he decided it was time to head back. It was getting dark out and he needed to get home. So he got up and he turned around and he noticed his footprints had completely disappeared in the snow. This kind of freaked him out a little bit, but he needed to get back anyway. So he began walking back towards which way he thought he came. However, it began to snow harder. He got a little panicky and he started rushing a little bit. And then the last thing he remembers is blacking out and waking up in a forest. Now, David Kubecki woke up in a forest, looking up at a tree canopy with the light coming through it. It was warm, it was sunny, and it happened to be spring. Now, his last memory was him blacking out in the snow. He looked down at himself and he noticed he was wearing clothes that he had never seen before. Down to his side was a backpack that had glasses and a pair of running shoes that didn't even fit him. They didn't belong to him. He was completely confused and obviously panicked at this point. Well, David began to hike out of the forest, if you will, and he eventually ran into a town named Pittsfield. Now he went into the very first store he could find to talk to the clerk at the desk. The clerk informed him that yes, you are in Pittsfield after David asked. Now this is very concerning considering it's over 700 miles away from where he was skiing in Lake Michigan to what he thought was several moments ago. Now, lucky for David, he actually had family who lived in Pittsfield. So he found his way to his aunt's house and he knocked on the door to their absolute shock their loved one who had been missing for 14 months was at their front door. After some long questions and hugging and embracing, you know, they wanted to know, David, where have you been? What happened? We thought you were dead. He couldn't explain the situation to them. He told him what happened and no one could understand it. Now let's go back to when he disappeared. When David hadn't returned home that day from Lake Michigan skiing, um, a search and rescue team was put together and sent out. They found his tracks very, very fast. They were able to see it immediately. They followed it down to the lake and they found his ski poles and his skis. Now, there were no footsteps leaving his spot. He was absolutely one way in and they stopped at the lake. Now, the searchers at the time determined that 
Since there was no tracks, he must have gone into the lake and drowned. It had been presumed for over 14 months that David had died. Now, <laughs> this is where it gets really strange to me. In David's own story, he says that when he turned around when he was resting, his footprints were gone in the snow and he began to panic and he ran out. Why did the searchers find his tracks leading to the lake, but none going away from it? The tracks that he said were gone were the only tracks that the searchers could find. It's a very strange situation. Now, researchers and investigators never could get to the bottom of exactly what had happened. David's bank accounts were completely unused. There was no activity. It was all signs that he had just straight up disappeared and died. Now, David himself was so concerned and confused about this, a young man who already had a degree in a different career field decided he was going to go back to school and get a degree in psychology just to better understand him, his situation. This is a very strange story and one of the positive ones in a way because David actually came back and a lot of the missing 411 cases, these people are A, never found again or B, found dead. So it is a very strange case and we just don't know what happened to David that day, but he disappeared for 14 months and he has no knowledge of what happened. So now we go on to our second missing 411 case of the day. Back in 1981, a man by the name Maurice Demitz disappeared in the National Pike Forest in Colorado. Now, Maurice was an 81 year old man who was absolutely in love with hunting topaz, a rare rock mineral. I'll include a picture here. Now, Maurice happens to also be a theology major and he actually published several books and he had this belief that one day, you know, the Antichrist would take control and the world would end. Now, besides that, let's get into the story of how he disappeared strangely. Now, David, being an 81 year old man, had incredibly poor mobility. His legs just did not work. His knees were out. So he used to go topaz hunting with his best friend, a younger man by the name David. Now, David and Maurice both went to the National Pike Forest in Colorado to go topaz hunting. That involved them driving down the freeway and then turning off on a dirt road that went for 16 miles into the wilderness. The location that they would go to to hunt topaz was well known in the area, and it goes by the name Devil's Head. Not only did the Native Americans that traditionally lived in that area say it's an extremely haunted area and they avoided it, but also early settlers gave it the name Devil's Head because very strange disappearances occurred in that area and they associated it with evil. Now, David went off about 150 meters away to go to his own little digging area and Maurice had his own little area and he was digging and David walked over to him to see how he was doing, you know, wanted to see if he needed any help. And Maurice said, oh, we can head out in about 10 minutes. I'm almost done here. So David walked back to his site 150 meters away to begin cleaning up his tools and getting ready to leave. Now, Maurice needed help to get down to the site and leave the site because his knees were so bad. And that's where David helped him out. Well, when David returned to Maurice's digging site, just 150 meters away, Maurice was gone. His tools were still there, everything was still there, and there was no sign of where Maurice had gone. And keep in mind, he's a disabled 81-year-old man who has very limited mobility. He needed David to get in and out of there. It just wasn't explainable. So after looking around for a little bit, David decided he needed to get back to the car and he needed to get help. But first he went back to the car and began honking the horn and gave it one last attempt to call Maurice's name out. Now, this would end in a five day search in which hundreds of searchers would come in to try to help and find Maurice. After five days, it was determined that he must be dead and he won't be found. This was such a problem to Maurice's wife. Obviously, she's distraught. She misses her husband. She begged the governor of Colorado to reopen the case in finding him. Unfortunately, she never received a reply from the governor. Now, it, David Politis, the investigator who searched into this case, determined and found actually that there had been several strange disappearances in this area under similar circumstances. And unfortunately, that intention that he brought by making a mini documentary, not unfortunately, fortunately, 
brought so much attention to the case that the governor, 30 years later, who was in charge at the time, reopened the case in the disappearances of people in Devil's Head. Now for our third missing 411 case of the day. Back in 2014, a man by the name James McCorgan, a medical doctor, went on a trip with his friends, split snowboarding. For those of you who don't know what split snowboarding is, it's like a mixture of cross-country skiing and snowshoeing. They would switch between the two to get pretty far out there in the wilderness and follow trails that were snowed in. Now, James and his friends had been on this journey before. This was not the first time for them. They were experienced in this, and it's something that they did for fun. And James was not only a medical doctor, but he was a skilled adventurer, and he came prepared. He had his cell phone, and he had a satellite GPS device that would allow him to find his way and make it wherever he needed to. Now, James and his friends were out doing their split snowboarding when he was always a little bit faster than his friends, would go up ahead and wait for them. And in one situation, he said, hey guys, I'm gonna plow through this. I'll wait for you at the next stop point and you know, we'll go from there. When his friends finally arrived at the next checkpoint, they could not see him anywhere, nor could they see any signs of him. There was no trail, there was nothing. So after waiting a while and then deciding to go ahead and try to catch up to see maybe if he would be at the next one, they never found him. At this point, they became concerned and they went back and they got help. Now, James would not be found for five days and it wouldn't be by the searchers or his friends. It would be by two random hikers that were 4.5 miles away by the crow flies, which means probably about a 14 mile hike if you were to do it on foot. He was at the bottom of a waterfall with his skull crushed. He was still wearing all of his gear as well as his ski helmet, but he wasn't wearing any boots. It was almost like he fell out of the sky and landed on his head. There was no explanation for how he got there or why. He still had his uh, GPS satellite on him and he had his cell phone. He had everything on him to survive, yet his boots were gone and his gloves were removed. There was no signs of a trail of him getting there. They found nothing. It was truly almost as if he was picked up and dropped. Um, to this date, there has never been any sign of or evidence of what caused his death. Uh, they just have closed the case as he was found dead. This is one of many very interesting missing 411 cases that I'll be going over in future videos. Today, I was going to stick to three and give it a test run. And if you enjoy this content, please like, subscribe and drop a comment in the section below to let us know how we can keep improving this. This is still a very new uh, content page for me, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what we can get done on it. Now, I hope you have enjoyed this. Again, thank you so much for your support. If you enjoy this type of content, go ahead and follow, as well as check out our TikTok where we post all kinds of stuff, cheesy ghost videos, UFOs, everything. I mean, we only have 60 seconds on there to do things, so pretty much wild, wild west. Anyway, thank you so much. You guys have a great day. Thanks for watching the Spook Report. I'm Zach.